guys. We're sorry. Our, our subway broke down. That's a lie. You went to the game. I can see Joey's hand. For the love of God, take it off! <laughs> Good afternoon, Greater Los Angeles area. We have breaking news for you on this Sunday afternoon. Wealthy business executives Jose and Mary Kitty Menendez were shot at close range in their Beverly Hills home just a few moments ago. Police rushed to the scene after receiving this 911 call from their 21-year-old son, Lyle Menendez. Beverly Hills emergency. Yes, police. Uh... What's the problem? Sounds, uh... What's the problem? What's the problem? I'm sorry to kill my parents. Pardon me? So <laughs> Sierra Edgar and Jasmine LeBeau are outside of the crime scene right now. Thank you, Tess and Chelsea. Police just confirmed the deaths of Jose and Kitty Menendez. Sources say that Jose died instantly with multiple shotgun wounds to the head. Kitty, on the other hand, was shot several times in the face and torso. Police have no immediate suspects at the time, but have reason to believe that money is involved. Back to you. Thanks, guys. We'll have more on this tragedy as it develops. Welcome back. New developments on the murders of Jose and Kitty Menendez as police have brought into custody their sons Lyle and Eric Menendez. Police had suspicions after the sons went on a large spending spree with the inherited money, buying Rolex watches, cars, and a Cancun vacation, among other things. Police have recently come into possession of a rec recorded tape with the boys' therapist of Eric Menendez confessing to the murders of his parents. CSI experts Sierra and Jasmine have more information for you. Thanks guys, we have more information for you holding the secret recording of Eric's confession to his therapist. Dr. Ozeal here for you. This was the last piece of evidence police needed to take the brothers into to custody. Police used search warrants to confiscate these records. Lyle Menendez was arrested a few days after the records were taken and Eric surrendered to the police after his return from Israel for a tennis tournament. They are currently being held at Los Angeles County Men's Central Jail. We will update you when we get more information. Good morning, L.A. Just a day before the Menendez brothers' trial begins, we have a summary of the last four years for you. To begin, we have top-secret visuals from the night of the crime. We warn you of graphic content in the upcoming videos. After Jose and Kitty Menendez were shot with 12-gauge shotguns while watching TV, the police never suspected their sons to be guilty of the murders, but instead assumed an organized crime hit due to the strategic placement of the gunshot to the knees in both victims. Eric and Lyle Menendez led a normal childhood, being raised by a wealthy family. Both did well in school and were good at sports. The most trouble either of them had ever gotten into was when Lyle was suspended from Princeton for plagiarism. After six months and over one million in luxurious spending, police became suspicious of the brothers. It wasn't, however, until the ex-girlfriend of the boy's therapist released a tape of Eric confessing to shooting their parents that they had enough evidence 
to bring them into custody. The brothers continued to deny that they shot their parents until last week when they admitted that they were in fact responsible. They are still pleading not guilty, however, claiming that they acted in self-defense after years of sexual and emotional abuse. The defense's lawyer, Jill Lansing, states ahead of the trial, we are not disputing how it happened, where it happened, or who did it, but what we will prove to you is that it was done out of fear. The prosecution plans to argue that the pampered sons murdered their parents to collect the inheritance. The brothers will be tried simultaneously by the same judge, but for two different juries. If found guilty of first-degree murder, Eric and Lyle will face death in a California gas chamber. We will keep you updated following the start of the trial tomorrow. Stay tuned for your local weather forecast. Good evening, Los Angeles. Just a day after the mistrial of the Menendez brothers, we have an overview of the trial that started last July. Jill Lansing and Leslie Abramson, the brothers' lawyers, came out fighting, describing the brothers as innocent children who had been raised improperly. The defendants brought over 30 relatives, teachers, and sports coaches to the stand who all described Jose Menendez as a, as a success-obsessed tyrant who dominated his son's lives. After a month of hearing testimonies from witnesses who described Jose and Kitty as less than model parents, Judge Stanley Weisberg had heard enough and said, we are not talking about a child custody case. Eric and Lyle were then ordered to the stand. When Lyle took the stand, he painted a dark picture of his father's demanding nature. He described years and years of sexual assault as shown in this video. Did your father have sexual contact with you? Yes. And how did it start? Um, it just started with after sports practices, he would massage me, and uh, it, we would have these talks, and he would show me, and he would uh, fondle me, and he would ask me to do the same with him, and I would I would touch him, and we would undress. Um, Where would this take place? In my bedroom. And. How often would this happen? Like two or three times a week. We would be in the bathroom and uh, um, it would, he would put me on my knees and he would guide me all my movements and I would um, uh, have oral sex with him. Do you want to do this? The brothers admitted to talking about the abuse with their parents, claiming that Kitty said, if you had just kept your mouth shut, things might have worked out for you in this family. Lyle and Eric claimed that they were in fear of their parents hurting them and killed them five days later. Sierra and Jasmine have the prosecution side of the stories for us. Ladies? Thank you. The prosecution led by Pamela Bozenak declared the tales of abuse were nonsense. She brought to evidence proof of purchase out of town with false identification and paying in cash so that they couldn't be traced. The prosecution played the therapist's confession tape, pointing out that the fact that there was no mention of the abuse, but they also said anything about killing for the inheritance. The prosecution had the therapist, Dr. Ozeal, and a high school friend, Kevin Wallen, testify the abuse claims were a lie and that they never experienced anything of the sorts. They ended their case calling the brothers vicious, spoiled brats who killed their parents out of greed and repeatedly covered their tracks. Back to you guys. Thanks. Defendant lawyer Lansing closed by saying, it may be hard for you to believe that these parents could have killed their children, but is it so hard to understand that these children believe that their parents would kill them? After 16 days of deliberations, Judge Weisberg and the jury could not agree on a verdict, and it was declared a mistrial. They will most likely go back on trial this summer. That's all we have for you today. Have a good night, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Breaking news. Los Angeles Judge Stanley Weisberg has come to a decision on the Menendez brother trial after a seven-month second trial. We'll go live outside of Los Angeles courtroom to hear the verdict. Well, I think that Judge Weisberg correctly made all of the rulings concerning the admission of the evidence in this case. And although it is to be expected that they will appeal, I don't think that there's, they have any good grounds for that. 
And every grounds for the appeal has been litigated very, very thoroughly already in court, as everyone who's been present throughout this trial knows. Well, you heard it here first, folks. After 16 hours of deliberation, brothers Eric and Lyle Menendez have finally been convicted of first-degree murder and assigned two consecutive life sentences in jail, seven years after murdering their parents. The second trial was heard only by a single jury. The judge banned television cameras from the courtroom and restricted testimonies to events relevant to Eric and Lyle's state of mind just the week before the killings. This put a severe dent in the defense's case, most likely leading to the verdict. The brothers will be held separately as maximum security inmates and are to be segregated from other prisoners. Well, LA, that brings a close to a long and sad story of family relations gone terribly wrong. We'll see you back tonight at 6. It's not always easy to understand why some true crime stories grab the public eye and dominate headlines, but the saga of the Menendez brothers was a no-brainer. A pair of handsome siblings dressed in matching pastel sweaters who ruthlessly killed their rich parents in their Beverly Hills mansion, then spent the months after the murders blowing thousands of dollars on luxury cars and vacations? A Hollywood screenwriter couldn't have even made that up. It's been nearly 30 years since the brothers shot Jose and Kitty Menendez to death, and 20 since they were sentenced to life in prison. But the interest in their case hasn't ceased with the passage of time. 2017 brought not one or two, but three television specials about the pair. What's become of the boys, as their lawyer famously and repeatedly referred to them? Here's where they are now. Good afternoon, Los Angeles. There's a bit of a throwback for you. Wow, Chelsea, I remember covering this story. What was it, 22 years ago? I believe so. Crazy how fast time goes. Regardless, despite the boys' many attempts at habeas corpus, they still remain behind bars. Eric Menendez is currently serving his life sentence at Richard Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego. He married his prison pen pal, Tammy Sackerman, in 1997. He works with terminally ill and physically challenged inmates, according to his brother Lyle. Eric is more press shy than Lyle and has not done as many interviews. Lyle says the two have stayed in touch through letters. After beginning his sentence at Mule Creek State Prison in Ione, California, where he ran a support group for inmates who have experienced sexual abuse, Lyle was transferred to the same facility as Eric just recently on February 22nd. Despite being at the same prison, they are in different facilities, and it still remains up in the air whether they will be permitted to see each other. Lyle has been married twice, first to a model in 1996, and now to Rebecca Sneeds since 2003. Lyle recently spoke out. I am the kid that did kill his parents, and no river of tears has changed that, and no amount of regret has changed it. I accept that. You are often defined by a few moments of your life, but that's not who you are in your life, you know. Your life is your totality of it. As of now, there is still no chance of parole or even an appeal for the brothers. According to recent interviews, the boys regret it every day. That's all we have for you, Los Angeles. We'll see you back here at 6.